Hello everyone, and welcome to something a little different. Uh, if you've been watching my channel before, I mostly play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. That's, I think, pretty much the only thing I have up so far. Um, but I've been playing a lot of Invisible Ink recently, uh, which I mentioned in, I think, my last crawl video <laughs> right before I died. Um, it's a, it's an interesting... Uh, it's, a, it's a stealth game, so you, you, know, you sneak around and try to avoid being seen by the enemy, um, you know stuff like that. Uh, but it's also very much a roguelike uh, in the same way that Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup is. Um, you, you know, it's all turn-based and tile-based. It looks, you know, prettier, right? It's not just, um, not just ASCII. Um, but it's, it's randomly generated, which I'll get back to. I think that's one of the biggest biggest features it has going for it. Um, there's there's permadeath, uh, kind of. So there's a, the difficulty settings, um, the main, one of the biggest things that changes in the higher difficulties is the reduced number of retries you get. So you get, you get a rewind, right, which is a, like a go back in time, undo the last turn if you really mess things up. Um, and in, on easy you get like five of them and you can redo levels if you die. So there's basically no permadeath at all. Um, and on harder levels, you get fewer rewinds, and you don't get to retry levels. Um, uh, and there's also, like, just absolutely a bajillion uh, customizable settings where... Um, so there's, this is all, like, expansion pack stuff. Who cares? But you can, you can customize it yourself. So the thing that bothers me about most stealth games... I really like the idea of sneaking around, guys. It's a lot, I, I have a lot of fun with the tactics of that. Um, but... I wonder if I should start if I should be talking about that now, or if I should just get going into a game and then start talking about things. I think I'm, I think I'm going to keep talking about it because once I'm in the game, I'm going to want to explain how this game in particular plays. Um, but is is once you've played a stealth game, it's like you know where all the guards are. You can go through a level again and try to get a you know a perfect or whatever. But it's it's not the same as like the first time when you really don't know where everything is and you're exploring stuff. Um, so here, everything is randomly generated. Every every new mission is a, a facility that's never been created before, and you can tune all this stuff. I haven't um, to make it you know as hard as you want uh, or as easy as you want, which is a nice feature that a lot of stealth games don't really have. They just make they just add a few more guards, or they make the guards more you know notice you hard more, or whatever. I don't know. Um, so. Uh, I started playing this because, so I finished the, the story mode campaign on, like, medium, which they recommend you play hard once you know how to play. Hard is where they tune, like, they, they balanced everything around hard, expert. So there's, like, easy, medium, hard, and then, like, really hard. Uh, somewhere around here it's really hard. Yeah, really hard. Um, and I I started playing Endless, which is where, like, anyway, the story mode campaign is super boring. You guys don't want to watch it. It's just, like, it's cool that they have a randomly generated campaign, but it's basically just like playing random levels with the occasional stupid plot point thrown in, and the plot points are just not interesting. Um, the randomly generated levels are the key. So I went and played Endless for a while, and it started getting pretty dang hard, uh, which I'm still I'm still alive. I'm still having fun with it, but uh, the missions are taking a real long time, and I wanted a break uh, to get back to some some of the earlier levels. The difficulty goes up as you as you progress through levels too. Anyway, so. I haven't played on this, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Endless Plus, which is like, uh, which is like Expert Plus difficulty. I haven't played on the hardest difficulty yet. And like, you can, you can make the difficulty even harder if you want, but, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to. It's already plenty hard just on Expert. Uh, do, 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 do. So, uh, I think we're just going to get started. And the first thing we do is we pick some agents. So we, you start off with two of these like spy hacker characters. We're in like the future and hacking computers and so on, stealing from corporations. Uh, you pick two of these guys to start with. You can eventually have a team of up to four. Uh, I mean, International is I is one of they're all really really good. But International is particularly strong if you're like a sort of beginner player. It seems to me. I don't know. I find International really strong, but I've also found some of the other guys really strong with, with a little bit of practice. 
Some of them seem really weak, but then you read on the forums where they're saying, please nerf this guy, he's so strong. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll just choose randomly who we play with here. Monster and Decker. Well, I played with Decker last in my... I have Decker in my other mission campaign, and he's he's great, but uh, I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to randomize again. Dr. Shu and Prism, huh? Okay, that's interesting. Archive Prism, what does she do? Uh, so it also randomizes these things, the, the programs you start uh, with to hack, but I don't think I'm going to do that. You know, it occurs to me, I should probably make this, like, the character creation and, and intro its own video, uh, so that if you want, you can skip it. How long have we been going so far? Five minutes? Uh, that's not, like, super long, but uh, I'll be looking around at these guys some more. So, uh, what is Dr. This is normal Dr. Zhu. He's got, like, his a shock trap, which is pretty strong, and an EMP thing, which is pretty decent. And Prism... She can, like, cloak or disguise herself somehow? I don't really understand it. It's like a permanent or ongoing um, stealth effect, but it doesn't work from close up, I think. Yeah, interesting. And she starts with, like, a hacking tool. Okay, that sounds fun. Uh, and Dr. Shu, I'm sure, is fine. I haven't played with either of these guys before. Uh... But uh, Power Drip is fine. Brimstone is like just not what you want to start with. I I liked starting with Rapier uh, in, a, in a different game. Rapier seems pretty good. Parasite is also good. I think I'll, I think I'll take Parasite here. Uh, since I sort of anticipate using a lot of power for Prism, I don't really know. We'll see. Uh, and I'll explain what those are all about when we get started. Um, so I think that's actually the end of this video. I'm going to cut it off now that I've picked how to start. And then, um, when I, I'm going to get into the, the real game and start explaining the mechanics. So if this sounds intriguing to you, you know, randomly generated stealth roguelike with permadeath and all this great stuff, uh, then stick around. And if it doesn't like, uh, that's great. Uh, good for you. Go watch something you would rather, uh, would rather watch, whether that's someone else or one of my dungeon crawl videos. Uh, and if I didn't put an annotation to this effect at the beginning of the video, you know, remind me, someone send me a message and tell me to put that annotation at the beginning. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a minute.